All right, all you acoustic guitar players out there, today we are going to look at some budget priced models for you if you are playing in a coffee shop or the bar scene. This gigging guitarist over here has put a list together and we are going to break it down for you, so stay tuned. Hey everybody, you're watching Alamo Music TV on YouTube. My name is Chris McKee. I'm Cooper Greenberg. We're here with Alamo Music Center in San Antonio, Texas, and you can find us online at alamomusic.com. So Cooper, you're a gigging guitarist. Do you play out regularly? Yeah, I do. You play very many coffee shops, more of bar scenes? I uh, definitely play some coffee shops, a lot of bars, a lot more coffee shops when I first started and I couldn't get into the bars. So, yeah. Yeah, but they're all good. I think that's pretty standard. There's a lot of guys who are playing coffee shops, doing open mic stuff, uh, maybe playing you know, church, small groups, or whatever, or bars, or all of the above, because that's all cool too. And what we wanted to do is kind of put together a list of some compelling budget price guitars that would work well in that kind of, in, kind of environment. So I asked Cooper here to put a list together, since you're out gigging on a regular basis, and I tend to be kind of guitar snobby, so everything would be probably too expensive. Um, but these is, this is really kind of a good mix of guitars. Now, this is by no means an exhaustive list. We wanted to keep it yeah. down to you know a little bit more than a handful of guitars and cover a range of uh, prices. So as you put this list together, I actually debated some points with you and we're gonna talk about that because there are some reasons uh, to choose any of these guitars. Uh, and we'll break down one thing that all of these have in common. They're all acoustic guitars, they all have a solid top, and they all have a pickup system. Because that's important, right? Yeah. Why would that be important? Uh, I think ease of being able to go into a place and plug into a PA direct. You're not messing with mics. You're not picking up the sounds that often accompany coffee shops and bars and places. I mean, that brings in so many other complications when you have to throw a mic on an acoustic at a gig. So I think these are all good to just be ready to go kind of plug and play. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I think that brings up a question that I've seen sometimes on our channel from comments. And by the way, we welcome any comments that you put below. Well, most of them anyway. But uh, one of the comments has been like, hey, why, uh, like why don't you just mic up a guitar? Um, and the reason for that is because of feedback and proximity issues and can you move and picking up other sounds, yeah. like you said. So yeah, having a guitar that is what we would call kind of stage or gig ready means that you have a pickup system. Mm -hmm. I think the other great thing though is to have a guitar that is a solid top. So sometimes a pickup system is about having it and not needing it rather than needing it and not having it. So there's some times where you might be in an environment if it's a small group setting, maybe a smaller coffee shop where you're really just playing acoustically. And if that's the case, then a solid top on your guitar is really what you want to have because it's going to project the most, it's going to sound the most resonant, it's going to age, all of that stuff. Yeah. So let's get started. We'll talk about each of these guitars and why they're a good choice. So why don't you start with the one that you've got first? Yeah, I have a uh, Yamaha Storia right here. And to be honest, the first thing that I think you notice about the guitar is the color and the aesthetic, and it's a little more modern, new age um, guitar. But I think it's a great choice because it's very simple, um, kind of elegant looking for something that's a little non-traditional. And uh, you know, the neck, it's very comfortable. And I think for somebody that's just getting started, like to play coffee shop, bar scene, um, this is something that it's like, it's very playable. You're, you're not working too hard, like maybe some jumbo or something like that. Yeah. Um, but it's not, I mean, it's not a mini guitar. It's, you know, full size, yeah. but it's, um, I don't know. I just think uh, also it's, we talked a little bit about the pickup system, but there's not 
any knobs and effects. Yeah, as... it, it's a passive pickup. And so Cooper and I, we kind of debated a little bit to let you guys know what's going on behind the scenes. I said, well, you know, a, a very popular Yamaha guitar that we love and we've done lots of videos and sell a lot of would be like the FGX or FSX 800, 820, 830 guitars. Mm -hmm. You can have a cutaway, you can have a preamp and so forth. But there is a very compelling reason to choose this. And, you know, it, it is... Simplicity, one mm. for one thing, which is actually rather nice. You're not having to deal with batteries. You're not having to worry about all of that. You can mix stuff off board, really. Um, and it has a great feel, and it has a, a really nice aesthetic. And that's something that actually is important. You know, we, we might negate it, but I think the fact of the matter is most of the times we're attracted to guitars as musicians um, based upon the visual aesthetic, first yeah. of all. Um, and one of the things that is important when you're performing is the visual aesthetic. You are... Yeah. Performing, you are putting on a show. You're not performing behind a curtain, and so how you look and how your gear looks and kind of the overall performance that you put forth is really important. And so, yeah, yeah. this is really cool, particularly for a modern, younger guitarist. Yeah, and I also think if you've seen the story of video that Chris did previously, there are several other finish we'll put options. A link right there to yeah, the several other options that can fit different aesthetics. Mm -hmm. um, there's darker natural finishes. There's a gloss. There's Another satin, um, and they all look really sharp. Yeah. For and they're they're all understated. None of them are like crazy burst colors and stuff. Which not, <laughs> fuchsia not burst. My favorite. No, yeah. No fuchsia burst. But I think if we're juxtaposing something incredibly simple. <laughs> yeah. Here's the other side of the coin from Yamaha. So this is um, one of the trans acoustics, the FSTA. And you know when the trans acoustics first came out, they were based upon L series. They were all solid wood. They're very you know, a lot more expensive than this one. So this is mid-priced guitar, um, and it's based upon the FSFG bodies that we were just talking about, but with the transacoustic electronics in it. So I think the nice thing about this is it's onboard uh, effects. You've got reverb, you've got chorus, you're plugging in. All of those effects work through the plugged-in amplified system. But like we were talking about, if you are in an environment where you are not going to be plugged in for amplification, you are now acoustic, but you still have the benefit of the, yeah. the effects go, coming right out of the, the sound hole. So, you know, and just like all the Yamahas, that one, this one, they, they play great. The fit and finish is fantastic. Mm -hmm. It just, on its own as a guitar, it sounds great. The FS, you know, 800s, 820s, 830s, those have always been great guitars. Adding the uh, trans acoustic system to this one just yeah. brought it up a notch. And I, I love the burst finish on this one. It's a really nice burst. It's, um, it's vintage, but it's still, you know. It's modern it's, vintage. Yeah, it's cool. It's it's vintage meets uh, Yamaha's modern aesthetic. So, yeah. Very cool. So, those are two Yamahas. So, we're going to broaden the palette here a little bit and look at a few more. Yeah. Okay, so now we have two very different guitars for the most part uh, that would work well. And we, we debated about this one. Let's talk about this one first. So, yeah. Uh, this is a Taylor GS Mini. If you don't know what a Taylor GS Mini is, uh, go to school. <laughs> no, no, this has been one of the most popular acoustic guitars for probably a decade now. I mean, t Taylor sells more GS Minis than certain guitar manufacturers sell guitars, period. So they are very, very popular with very good reason. So this is a popular choice because of its size, yeah. right? Um, portability. You have a lot of different versions of it. Mm -hmm. um, and now, in this version, we, this is a limited edition, okay? So just for you know, uh, disclosure, uh, this is probably more expensive than most people would choose for just yeah. a coffee shop guitar. But they start at $4.99 for a version that doesn't come with a pickup. And you can put a pickup in pretty quickly. But um, from the Walnut version up, you have an onboard preamp. You have the same pickup element as an ES2. Um, and you have a solid top guitar that has a really good resonant sound acoustically and has a fantastic Taylor only electric uh, electronic system. Yeah. So uh, now we talked about this one versus an Academy mm -hmm. series. So with the Dreadnought or Grand Concert, the Academy 12s, those are both full size guitars. Why did you choose this one over an Academy? Well, interestingly enough, that was actually the first guitar that came to mind when we were thinking coffee shop guitars. I was like, well, GS Mini, GS Mini for sure is going to be on yeah. the list. Um, and partly because I, I mean, I have one myself. I have two actually. And um, it's it's like the easiest guitar. You play them both at the same time? Yeah. Uh, Tenacious D style. Like, um, <laughs> um, But I, 
I would say that of all the guitars that I have and love, my GS Mini is like my my daily is my it daily like driver. The one you, know? you grab on the top. Yeah, it's yeah. The, I mean it's yeah, the yeah, easiest to just pick up and jam on. And I think if you got it in the backpack and you have maybe like a Fender Passport, little PA, and a bag of chords, you're walking in and out of the gig in one trip, very easy. Um, that was the probably some of the best advice you're going to get on the entire video. Yeah. Is if you are playing a gig like this, a lot of times you are taking your own PA, you are having to yeah. set up, you are having to tear down, and uh, you know we say a lot of times in music, less is more, right? Play the rest and stuff. When it comes to setup. Less is more. Yeah, you know. so I think, uh, I mean, I have a big PA and a small PA. If I can take one trip with a small PA, a small bag of like cables yeah. and a GS Mini, it's like the best mood I'm going to be in walking into a gig, you know? Um, but also, I think it, if you haven't played a GS Mini, um, like once you pick one up, it does not sound like a smaller size guitar. Ba yeah, it kind of punches above its weight yeah, class. It's, yeah, it sounds big, especially if you get one with the pickup. You can, I mean, you don't need to do much work to it to make it sound like any full-size guitar. It's very playable. Again, like the Storia that we talked about, it's great for maybe somebody who's just getting started. It's easy to grab yeah. for, you know, a smaller-handed person. But, um, yeah, I just think they're, like, one of the most solid value guitars and... All the different wood options are beautiful, you know. Which is why it's been popular for so many years. Yeah. So we're going from this basically a travel size acoustic electric steel string guitar to the Cordoba nylon string. Yeah. Um, so this is a C7 yeah. CE, and uh, you know you can get this just as a C7, but the CE is what we're talking about because it's a cutaway acoustic electric guitar. Yeah. Um, so tell us, this is you know suddenly we've gone to nylon string. Yeah. Why? Um, because I think that. Maybe they don't get enough credit when people talk about, you know, doing an acoustic gig. I think yeah. you got to have some love for the nylon. Um, and when you're looking at Cordoba, it's like the, you know, it's the gold standard kind of for like somebody's entry level jumping into a nylon and they make beautiful guitars all the way. Oh, up, yeah. They make know? really high end, very expensive guitars yeah. that are really kind of clones of some of very famous vintage classical guitars yeah. because they have access to them. But yeah, I think Cordoba for a number of years now has been producing really good quality, um, value-priced guitars with a lot of features that people want. Uh, Yamaha would be the other one that's yeah. there that's very similar price, very good quality. Uh, but I do like some of the features that particularly their cutaway models have. So it's a nylon string guitar with a truss rod which is not normal, so you can adjust the action on it, which I think is great. Their cutaway models have a different neck. It's a little thinner. Yeah. Um, and the electronics on here are fantastic. So it is solid wood. It's a solid cedar top, giving you all that warmth that you want out of a classical guitar, that kind of boom and resonance you hit if you just hit that low E. But the electronics are great. So that's got the Fishman what? The prefix? Yeah, the Precis. Precis. So it's an under-saddle Fishman Matrix pickup. But it's also got a microphone inside with the blend option. And there's some guys who just, the microphone's so good. Ben Wood specifically, who used to endorse Cordoba, fantastic classical guitar player. He plays actually like flamenco or flametal, because he'll play like Bark at the Moon, flamenco style. It's cool stuff. And he recorded a whole album, I heard him say, with a guitar like this, with that same pickup system, using the microphone inside. Yeah. So having the ability to have really almost what sounds like studio level kind of microphone recording from inside the guitar at your gig is great, but you also have the ability if you have feedback to get away from it really yeah. quickly. So yeah, um, yeah really just a, a good all around guitar. I think, yeah, I think on the list, this might be my favorite visual guitar. I think it's, um, you know, it's beautiful and like the, the rosette on it and every, Every single inch of this guitar, it just very classy, beautiful instrument. But also, if you are playing maybe a, a Taylor or a Yamaha or something at a gig, and you might have the opportunity to switch over and do some stuff on a nylon string, it adds so much dynamic to your uh, to your set. And also, something that you would play on a steel string acoustic, if you then move over to a nylon string, it's just going to have a different feel, and it might add some some flavor to what you're doing. And, and, and you don't have to just play classical on this. Yeah, no. I mean, you know, there's a guy, I don't know if y'all have ever heard of him, his name's Willie Nelson, he's been playing, you know, country music. You ever heard of him? 
Like once or I don't once know. Once or twice. Yeah, maybe. He looked like he could be his child. Um, yeah, so, uh, yeah, country music, folk music. Yeah, I mean, everything. It, flum metal. It, flum metal. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's, it's a great option, and I think these two are pretty much exact opposites, but they're both. Complimentary. Uh, yeah, they're, they're both valid. Get one options. of each and go to your coffee shop gig. Mm-hmm. All right, cool. We're going to look at a few more, so check it out. Okay, so we're going to end our kind of half a dozen guitars here with the final two entries on our list. Um, and I'm going to start with this one. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> this was kind of an a, addition because it was five. and little game time decision over here yeah. to add this bad boy. So Cooper uh, did five, and I said, wait, I've got to add one more. Um, and so the thing about both of these guitars, they're at the top of our list price-wise. And they're at the top of this list uh, spec-wise. Both of these are all solid acoustic guitars with a pickup system uh, from two different manufacturers that have great value to them and really add a lot to this idea of what makes a really good kind of gigging, inexpensive, budgetary price guitar. So this is an Epiphone Masterbuilt DR500 MCE. And it is a big, deep-bodied dreadnought that's all solid wood from Epiphone. And it has some really great sound to it acoustically. It's got a great feel. And I've gone on record of talking about how great I think the Epiphone Masterbuilt series is and what a good value it is. One of the things that makes this guitar a compelling option for what we're talking about here when you're gigging is it does have a great acoustic sound, but it's got a really cool pickup system that's available to it. So this has an eSonic 2 pickup system on it with a magnetic and an undersaddle pickup. So you've got this, this Nanoflex pickup and then you've got this magnetic pickup here. And you can run this either in stereo or mono with a single output or two different outputs. So the guitar has one output here, but it's got a secondary one here. And this opens up a whole host of of options. So there's some great guitar players out there, um, like Charlie Warsham comes to mind, who do kind of a, a wet, dry mix. And you don't necessarily need two pickups to do that. You can do an AB box and split it, what have you. But the idea is that if you're gigging by yourself or even with a small group, you can have affected lines and then dry, non-affected lines, meaning you can have reverb and delay on one and then the other one not so much, you know, just the acoustic sound. And you can blend those and really do a lot and and fill out your sound. So this comes ready to go like that. Um, And whether you use both inputs or just one input, you can blend, um, if you're using just the one output, you can blend from the magnetic pickup to the under saddle flex pickup um, back and forth and really kind of get this nice warm sound or just the typical piezo crystalline acoustic sound that you really expect. So it's a flexible guitar, sounds great, it's all solid wood, so it's going to age well. It looks the part and it gives you that great Gibson type tone yeah. uh, for you know around 700 bucks. So, Again, it's not an inexpensive guitar, but it's fairly affordable, all things being considered. Um, so that was my entry that I'm like, I think this needs to be on the list. Uh, but the, kind of the no-brainer to also put on the list is the one you have. So tell yeah, us about that. So one. we got an all mahogany uh, road series Martin here. And uh, first off, I I mean I think it's nice to have a Martin option that's less than a thousand dollars. And I, I don't think a ton of people equate affordable with Martin in their head. I think a lot of times people think about very, very high-end acoustics, but they make a really great, um, like, affordable acoustic guitar. And I think the Rode series across the board is a really good option. Um, and this one clocks in about 759 Yeah. And that, with a bag. Yeah. With, with a bag. pickup. Yeah. All solid. Yeah. And I think that maybe in terms of this video, it's definitely on the higher end of... It, it's a lot of money, but it's also just pure value, you know, and you pay for what you get. And I think having Martin on the headstock is a like a thing for people. They like to see that. But also, um, I mean, this is an affordable Martin, and it's very high quality. Also, um, just all mahogany. It looks classic, and it looks, you know, beautiful. And one of my best friends who also works at Alamo Music stands by his all mahogany Martin Triple O more than anything else, and he works here, and he can have, he can have anything, but he chooses the All Mahogany Martin. Yeah, I think it's. Um, there's a lot of gigging guitarists and recording guitarists that like those. Um, I know there's some Martin ambassadors that um, tend to prefer 
by the way, that's like someone who represents Martin. They, they tend to prefer um, the all mahogany guitars. There's a lot of uh, studio musicians in Nashville that do because that, that mahogany top compresses and so you have control dynamically and that's good in a live setting, it's good in a recording setting. Um, so I, I think, so this is the Triple O 10E and it, it's required me to relearn the name because for years it was the Triple O RSG. Um, but the Road Series has forever been a great value. We've talked about it in numerous videos. Um, and I think, so this one, it's, it, I think it's actually Sapele, but it's, or African mahogany, right? Yeah. It's got that look and that sound of a mahogany guitar. And it's a lot like a 15, yeah. like a Triple O 15 at a more affordable price. But, you know, yeah, it's seven fifty nine, and it's at the high end of what we're talking about budgetary wise. But if you are wanting a t guitar to gig with, all of these guitars represent something where you're not you're not doing without to get one of these. You're saving money. It's good value. There's a difference between cheap and good value, yeah. right? So we're not talking about cheap. If you want cheap, you probably are going to have struggle to even play a gig with it. We're talking about something that's good value. Yeah. And that certainly represents that, as all of these do. Um, and then the pickup system, I also like the tuner that yeah. they put in here. So there's, they've put a tuner. They haven't cut a hole in the side. It's just in the sound hole, so you have access to it. Mutes the line. It's a gig-ready guitar. Yeah, it is. So. And these two, um, if we're talking about value, I mean, being all solid guitars, they're going to age the best, and they're going to be a little bit more money. But if you can put that money into something that you know, you're getting all solid, it's gonna hold its value and it's just gonna sound better and better over time. Yeah, um, Yeah, a guitar is not like an, a phone. You don't need to get rid of it after two years. You don't need to update years. that, <laughs> yeah. Get some good that's gonna last forever. Cool, well, so now we're gonna put them through their paces and because these are acoustic electric, we're gonna mic them and we're gonna plug them in and let you hear for yourself what we're talking about. So, check it out.
All right, so there you have it. Some compelling options if you are looking for an acoustic guitar to do some gigging with. Whether you're playing at a church or a coffee shop or the bar scene or all of the above, uh, these are some great options to look at. And not just the six that we've looked at. Like we said, these, this is not an exhaustive list, but I think all of these manufacturers do present some very compelling options in a variety of price ranges that have features like this. So I would recommend that you check them out. I'm gonna put a link to each one of these guitars down below in the description. So if you'd like more specs, cause we didn't really focus on that. You know, some people ask, well, what's the nut width on that? We have all that information on our website, but I do encourage people not to get totally caught up in the specs. Sometimes people go, well, I have to have a guitar with this nut width. Well, what's the neck shape? What's the radius? What's the action? All of that stuff. So if you'd like some more information about them, click on the links below. It'll take you to our website. You can read all of that. Uh, but at the end of the day, we want to get you out there gigging, making music, uh, you know, letting other people enjoy your talent, developing or otherwise. Um, and you know, whether you have one of these, something more expensive, something less expensive, or you're still you know, trying to get to uh, a, a better guitar, whatever you're playing on, keep it up, because that's the best guitar in the world. We want to see you making music. So if you're new here, make sure that you subscribe, turn on notifications, like our videos. We'll keep making them for you. So thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Hey, thanks so much for watching. We hope you are enjoying our channel. You might be interested to know that Alamo Music has two more YouTube channels. One for piano and keyboard enthusiasts, and the other, our Alamo Music Audio Lab channel that focuses on synthesizers, drum machines, and other things with Chris Klein. So, if you are interested in checking those out down in the bottom of the description, I have links to both of those channels. We hope to see you there as well. Thank you.